Have you ever fallen in love with a pencil drawing at first sight? There's no denying art is a beautiful thing. However, not all mediums can make a picture come alive in the way that pencils do. Talking about hyper-realism, attention to detail, and more. In the hands of a skilled artist, pencils can work magic, but they're also used for tasks as ordinary as solving a crossword puzzle on the back of a newspaper or making the first draft of an article. We go behind the scenes to see how graphite pencils are produced, with an emphasis on how Faber-Castell colored pencils are made, as well as the special technique the company uses during their process. Graphite pencils are so common nowadays, especially since it doesn't take any special skill to use them. They're even available to toddlers who use them as drumsticks half the time. However, because of their easy availability, it's easy to neglect the extent of craftsmanship and hard work that goes into making these interesting objects. If you've ever wondered how world-class pencil brands manufacture high-quality pencils, you've come to the right place. The first graphite pencil can be traced to the mid-16th century, and what started as a big clump of graphite has evolved into a more stylish piece of stationery. Nowadays, a pencil is generally made up of two parts, the wooden part and the lead core. While some include two extra materials, rubber and aluminum, rubber is used to create the erasers at the end of the pencil, and aluminum is used for the band that holds the eraser in place. The first step in pencil making is to prepare the wood. Pencils aren't made from just any wood. They're made specially from cedar trees, which are at least 14 years old. The cedar trees are felled and logged by professionals with the aid of mechanical machines, and afterward, they're cut into uniform blocks the length of an average pencil. Each block is then cut into thinner wood pieces called slats, which are shipped off to the pencil factory. These slats are strong enough to withstand bending, but thin enough to sharpen easily. They're placed in kilns at the factory, where they are dried to create the appropriate moisture content for moving to the next production stage. Next, the slats are treated with wax and stain before being passed under a large cutting wheel, which creates grooves along the edges of the slats. These grooves are supposed to hold the graphite in place and are filled with special elastic glue which serves as a cushion for the graphite. The next stage of production is the preparation of the graphite. Graphite mining companies mine and extract graphite from its ores before sending them out to pencil companies. At this point, the graphite has been made into simpler units that are easier to work with so the pencil companies can get right into pencil production. First, chunks of graphite are mixed with clay in large rotating drums. These chunks are broken down by using the large rocks inside the drums, and the rotating current allows for the proper mixing of the clay and graphite inside the drum. Graphite is the main material, but since it is quite soft, mixing it with clay helps to make it tougher. Water is added to the drum at intervals, and the mixing process lasts for at least three days until a very smooth paste is formed. Afterward, the mixture is put into a machine that squeezes out all the water, leaving behind a gray sludge. A giant wheel then crushes the sludge, which results in a fine, dry powder. The next step is to turn this powder into lead rods that can fit into the pre-made grooves on the wooden pencil slats. So how are the lead rods produced from this dry lead powder? Water is added to the dry powder until a smooth, consistent paste is achieved. Then, this paste is pushed through a metal tube, and it comes out in the shape of thin rods. These rods are cut into pencil lengths, placed on a large surface, and transferred into the oven, where they are heated for a while at an incredibly high temperature. After these rods have been completely baked, they are ready to be placed into the slats and the real pencil formation process is ready to begin. First, a piece of wooden slat is placed on the table, exposing the grooves that already have elastic glue in them. Then, an automated arm inserts a graphite rod into each groove. After this is done, another slat is stacked on top, creating a graphite sandwich. Next, a mechanical plunger squeezes these slats against each other with an incredible amount of force. We're talking about 2,000 tons of pressure. After the slats have been compressed with great force, the glue holding the sandwiches together is allowed to dry. Once the glue is dry, the compressed slats are put through a fast rotating cutter, which gives the pencils the signature hexagonal shape. After that, the slats are separated into individual pencil units and ready to go through the next stage, which is painting and polishing. 
The pencils are placed under a shower head which sprays with at least five coats of paint. Some are sprayed more times than that, depending on the pencil's design and the quality the company is going for. Next, the aluminum ferrules and rubber erasers are added to the top of the pencil. Then, each pencil is branded with the company name, graphite grade, whether HB or 2B, and any other necessary engravings. With that, the manufacturing process is completed, and all that's left is packaging and shipping to different customers worldwide. Almost half of the pencils used in the U.S. are imported from China, and Chinese pencil producing companies are frequently patronized worldwide. But there are other well-known quality pencil brands. For example, the multi-billion dollar German company Faber-Castell. The company was founded in the 18th century, and today, it is the world's largest pencil manufacturer, making over 2 billion pencils every year. Faber-Castell pencils are available in a wide range, and colored pencils, which are more expensive than graphite pencils, are used producing a special technique. Unlike regular pencils, mostly made of wood and graphite, colored pencils are made using a wider range of materials, which includes pigment, binders, extenders, and wood. These components are used in different quantities, depending on the type and quality of colored pencils being made. Just like with the graphite pencils, the core is the most important part, but unlike them, Graphite is not used at any point in the production of colored pencils. So how are they made? The core is made by mixing four important ingredients. Pigment, binders, extenders, and water. The pigment is used to give the core color, and depending on the desired color, two or more pigments can be mixed. For primary colored pencils, just one pigment is used. But for secondary and tertiary colors, chemists and color specialists are hired to determine the right pigments to mix to get the right colors. Binders and extenders make up most of the core. For wax-based colored pencils, wax is used as the binder, and the most common waxes used are paraffin, beeswax, and carnauba wax. For oil-based colored pencils, on the other hand, a mixture of oil and wax is used as the binder and this combination makes the core stronger and more durable. Extenders are used to amplify the quality of the core, and the amount applied determines on the texture of the pencil. For example, pencils with harder cores use a lot of extenders, while the soft ones have less. After mixing all the components, the resulting core is shaped and ready to dry. However, the core is not subjected to extremely high heat, otherwise the wax in the core would melt. After drying, the individually shaped core is placed into the wooden cases, and just like other graphite pencils, they're painted, branded, tested, packaged, and transported to the market. What's your favorite type of Faber-Castell pencil to use? Leave your answer in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.